Yo, what's up guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I've been playing Team Fight Tactics since it came out. I was new to auto battlers at the time, but TFT stood out to me immediately because I loved returning to the League of Legends universe that I've seen grow for the past decade. When I first heard about the game, everyone was raving that this new genre of games would take over. Auto battlers were the top watch game on streaming services like Twitch.tv, and TFT was blowing up on social media from the majority of popular streamers. It's not news that set 1 players are very disenchanted with set 2 of TFT. I've had 13 friends playing teamfight tactics in set 1, and now only 3 play. Popular streamers have also abandoned the game. Even the competitive players are quitting the game. The rank 1 and 2 player in North America, Delicious Milk, gave up and let both of his accounts decay from Challenger. With set 3 coming out, I want to know why all the popular streamers abandoned the game. We also have casual and competitive players quitting teamfight tactics. What's causing all of this? For casual players, think of a student or someone with a full-time job. They probably play at most one game a day during the week, maybe a few more during the weekend. While this is still a few hours a week devoted to gaming, it doesn't give enough time to go through TFT's large learning curve every set. Each set, you have to memorize more than 50 champions, their abilities, costs, origins, classes, items, and even now the maps before playing the game. Loot drops, such as gold and leveling threshold changes, throw off previously memorized patterns as well. Worse yet, you can't even play your favorite composition, let alone your favorite champion that you've played for months and months. Since I am a TFT content creator, relearning the game during a new set wasn't challenging or seen as a waste of time to myself personally, but the truth is, the majority of players are casual players who play less than 10 games a week. There's simply not enough time to relearn the game from scratch every couple of months for a casual player. With set 3 coming, I expect many to quit again because the learning floor for casual players is just too high. I know that new players get introduced to the game with each set, but it doesn't make sense to alienate a group of players. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for new things, and I love Riot experience with new philosophies and concepts each set, but shutting out a player base every 3 months is surely not healthy for expanding and popularizing teamfight tactics. Compare this to a traditional card game where an expansion is introduced, but you don't have to relearn every single card. You can still play a version of your old deck, but add a few tweaks here and there. You still get the fun and creativity of experiencing something new, but you don't have to relearn a brand new game. Next up, we're going to go into why some of the popular streamers and competitive players have quit the game. The competitive scene is pretty much non-existent. Why would a popular streamer stream TFT when they could be getting bigger and bigger playing different games? There have been maybe three big tournaments since the game's inception, which would be fine if they weren't mostly invitationals. I generally am okay with invitationals because I think tournament organizers should be able to invite whoever they want without any backlash, but since there have been so few Riot-sponsored tournaments compared to other games, it makes me feel like that they aren't taking the competitive scene seriously. Furthermore, the invitations for the invitational were slightly questionable since they didn't even include the highest watched Twitch streamer for teamfight tactics. If you're not inviting that guy, what are you even basing your invites on? In fact, instead, Riot even rewards all the streamers who quit their game and invites them to this large tournament. Don't get me wrong, I don't think Riot should be propping up the competitive scene for teamfight tactics, that stuff has to be organic, and there have been zero grassroots efforts from any organizer outside of Riot to actually make a good tournament. If you compare this to Super Smash Bros. Melee, this is a game that's been around for 20 years and Nintendo has never ever ever supported it. But that didn't stop Melee at all. They have huge tournaments at least once a month, including all the top players where they have to prove themselves amongst all the other competitors. Each of the players are driven more by passion rather than by money, which is something I think is lacking in teamfight tactics. I think once Riot starts to work a tiny bit on the competitive scene, other sponsors might fall in and maybe they'll give a bigger opportunity for other organizers. There's literally no incentive to play for random strong challenger players because they just wouldn't get invites to tournaments anyways. The only rank that matters is rank 1, because you can build a following after hitting that rank. Funny enough, all the top streamers in TFT right now aren't even popular streamers. They're just previously rank 1 players because every popular streamer abandoned TFT. I think there are two factors to this. We already covered that there's no competitive scene, but the popular players also left because, frankly, set 2 was not as great as set 1. Perhaps we're being a little spoiled, you know, set 1 was amazing, and that's why everyone fell in love with the game. And it's difficult to create two bangers in a row, let alone three or four. Let's go into why I think that. Let's compare some of the champion abilities from set 1 and set 2. I won't even get into the legendary since set 1 have, like, pretty much every legendary brings something unique to the game, while set 2 has stuff like Amumu who simply just crowd controls in a circle. Uh, let's do something more simple by comparing Rek'Sai and Volibear. These two champions were in both sets. 
In set 2, Volibear and Rek'Sai literally just have abilities that do high single target damage in melee range to their current target. Not fun to watch, nor is it engaging or unique. They literally have the same ability if you think about it. Compare that to set 1, where Rek'Sai burrowed, knocked someone up, healed, all with an intriguing animation, keeping you captivated as the fight went on. Volibear had crazy unhit builds that only he could do that chained attacks around the entire map. Other champions in set 1 were things like Shen with his no hit zone, Blitzcrank with his iconic hook which provided niche and creative counters to positioning. Meanwhile in set 2, there are almost no champions that punish positioning, and the biggest counter to attack damage is just playing Wardens, which are just a generic tank class. It's not even a comparison between set 1 and 2 champions. Set 3 looks pretty promising. Echo looks pretty cool, Aurelian Soul is literally a cooler version of Sinch from set 2, so maybe Riot kind of figured things out and set 2 was just an experiment. With these two sets in mind, I want to bring up a concept of fun and unfun RNG. Set 2 had a ton of the latter. Let's take a look at Azir, who is one of the most played units of set 2. His ultimate either wins the fight right away because his soldier kills an enemy carry in the first second, or he targets someone who walks out of range and becomes a useless unit. This isn't an example of unfun RNG because it is incredibly frustrating to see useless ultimates and it is incredibly demoralizing to get your carry sniped and have the fight decided in the first two seconds. Let's compare this to a champion like Twisted Fate and Set 1 with his Picket Card ability. Sure, everyone wanted blue card in teamfight tactics, but failing an RNG role wasn't game breaking or demoralizing because the other options still had strong effects. And since his mana pool was low, you knew Twisted Fate was going to use his ability yet again before the fight would be decided. This is what I call an example of more, more fun RNG. There are many more examples of unfun RNG in set 2, but you guys probably already know what they are. On the contrary, I can think of very few instances of fun RNG in set 2. The boring champion abilities, combined with the unfun RNG effects, affected both casuals and competitives alike. But many people simply cannot play this game for 10 hours a day like they did in set 1. For example, I played a thousand games of set 1, but less than 200 in set 2. I know there are exceptions, there are people who do like set 2, but it is very few and far between compared to set 1 supporters. Again, 10 of my friends quit the game right as set 2 came out, either because they didn't want to learn a new set or because they tried it and hated it. I don't subscribe to Riot's philosophy of creating entirely new sets, but what you should subscribe to is maybe my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below the video. My suggestion to solve the set problem is to introduce new and remove old synergies and groups to the game one or two at a time. For example, we could take out nobles but add in lights. We could take out assassins and put in infiltrators. This way, we could keep the game fresh but also take out the gargantuan learning curve from new sets. By swapping the entire set, it makes it so incredibly difficult for anyone trying to play the game without spending 20 hours on it a week. Next, let's get into the community. Any game that has elements of randomness always brings out the worst in people. While the TFT community isn't as toxic as League of Legends, and you don't have people raging at you after a game like in Hearthstone, it seems that TFT players operate in silos separate from everyone else. Everyone has their own way of playing, and in a way, it feels like playing solitaire. Since there are very few people at my rank, I see the same people in all my games, but I find no reason to add people unless I knew them from somewhere else before. Next we can talk about social communities. Riot shut down their forums, so nothing TFT related is there, which leaves us with Reddit, with our teamfight tactics and our competitive TFT. Our teamfight tactics is just full of memes, which is great for casual players, but doesn't offer any substance on the state of the game or interesting discussion. Competitive TFT is full of some of the most stubborn and clueless people on the planet, discouraging many of the good content creators. This causes the only content on that subreddit to be one-hit wonder types of posts by a random challenger player, and they don't really continue posting because it's actually very difficult to create good TFT content that's accepted widely. And frankly, much of the game is hard to explain when people aren't actively trying to learn. The rest of the sub is filled with low effort and low popularity content that is spanned by the same group of people multiple times per week. The lack of an engaging community is terrible for the growth of the game. If you compare Teamfight Tactics and Competitive TFT to any other subreddit for any other game, it's a vast difference between the quality of posts and the number, and I just don't see a game growing without cohesion within the community. The only community that are nice to be in are discords, such as mine, where we have a growing community of friendly players who are all trying to improve at TFT, which you can join at bunnymuffins.lol slash discord. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but the only issue with Discord groups is that they're either very small or they're very exclusive. If anyone knows of any active and thought-provoking communities outside of Discord, outside of Reddit, outside of League of Legends forums, 
please let me know in the comments below. To sum up, there are many reasons why people are leaving TFT and auto battlers in general. I think the main reason is that there is so much change between each set that it is really difficult to keep up with the game even as a hardcore player. Even though it is fun to learn new things, the large amount of new information can be a huge turnoff for someone who is looking for something more casual. Obviously, since I'm a content creator for Teamfight Tactics, I want the game to grow as much as possible, but I think Riot's going in the wrong direction if they want to get loyal players into the game for the long term. But let me know how you guys would approach this problem if you were Riot. And don't worry, I, I, I love TFT. I'll keep posting guides, streaming every weekend at twitch.tv slash bunnymuffinslol. So if you guys like this video as much as I like TFT, you'll definitely want to hit the like button, as that helps me so much and I appreciate every single one of them. And even if you dislike the video, hit the dislike button as well, but also explain why in the comments. I have so much content lined up for set 3 that I'm so excited to do. We also have mobile coming out as well, um, so hopefully this injects the ecosystem with new players and grows the game. I actually can't wait till I can play on my phone because that means I can play the game from anywhere, but I think I'll reserve those games for my Smurf account because it's so much easier to play on a desktop. Um, that's it for today, I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching, don't forget to share and subscribe, and of course smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.